My name is Claire and this is my medical assistant's dog, Pal. Pal's personality is a very cheeky personality. Um, in the seven years that I've had him, um, although I've never seen a bad bone in his body, when he wants to be cheeky and, you know, do his own thing, he does. He's a typical Labrador and his brain is led by his belly. I can't go anywhere, I can't go to the loo without him being with me, I can't go upstairs without him following me. Even if I say to him, I'll be back, I'll be back in a minute, just give me two seconds, I can look round and he'll be behind me. He's just say, no, you're not going anywhere on your own, Mum. I need to look after you. Before um, Powell came into our lives, I'd had quite a roller coaster of a medical history. I'd been a type 1 diabetic since I was six years old, um, but that wasn't really too much of a problem. As a child, I was still always included in everything that, you know, we were doing at school, school trips, swimming lessons and all that sort of thing. I had two healthy boys um, later in life, which was fine. And then one day when I was taking the boys to a swim lesson, um, we were just waiting to go and I started to feel, feel unwell, and that was the last I remember. Well, I was very young when Mum first became ill. I was still at primary school. Me and Jed noticed that Mum was slowly deteriorating. We managed to get home and everything, and then that night it just took a nosedive from there, basically, and then she ended up in Maystone and various hospitals and things like that, and then three months she was in hospital. I don't remember him calling an ambulance later in the evening. I just remember two weeks down the line, being moved onto a ward at Maidstone Hospital, and they said I'd been unconscious for a week. Um, they weren't quite sure what was wrong. Um, and it was then that my renal failure was finally diagnosed. Um, came home with very little support, really. And that's when I started to lose my hypo awareness. Um, whereas before, I'd always had the, the hypo symptoms, like, you know, the sweatiness, the, the blurred vision, and all that sort of thing. And I knew my blood sugars were dropping. I just completely lost all of that. And, um, yeah, we'll just end up in a heap on the floor. And the boys were really, really struggling to come to terms with it all. 50% of the time when we came back from the school, there'd be a note on the table or, on the, or stuck to the door to say an ambulance has been called for mum to say she's gone to the hospital, or there would be an ambulance on the doorstep, or we'd come home and find mum in a heap on the floor. So it was more or less one of them things throughout the sort of week. On a sort of daily basis, you'd find one of them ha happening and it was just, it it impact me it's like it impact me at school. I missed some some of my key exams, some of like lessons because I'd always be worrying about mum. I'd always be ringing mum 24/7 to see if she's okay. And it was it was impacting my life and, and school life quite a lot. Before Claire's health started to deteriorate, we was quite a strong family. No, we'd done things together and things like that. We was quite a bonded, sort of, no, close knit family. But as her health started to deteriorate, it was as though cracks were starting to appear. It's put a lot of pressure on me, the boys, and like that, because we were always worried about Claire. The two boys were struggling at home a little bit, so I was looking for some support for them, really. And I, um, an advert just popped up on the screen saying that there was this new charity and that they were training dogs to help save people's lives, particularly type 1 diabetics. So I had to get medical you know, um, consent from my consultant and that sort of thing to say that he thought it was a good idea. Um, and we sent it off to the charity. And then a few weeks later they said, you know, would you like to come and meet a potential dog for you? So we did. And Pal came in with a tennis ball in his mouth and just sort of dropped it at my feet as if to say, well, come on then, if you're going to get to know me, I need to know that you can play ball first. So, um, so yeah, we had a game of ball outside. Um, then we had to wander around their little town. And they said, yeah, they, they, they thought it could work. Um, I didn't know whether to laugh, whether to cry or, or what to do, really. Um, and then we spent a few weeks working on my scent sample, where my blood sugars were sort of low. And um, yeah, eventually Pal came home with us a few weeks later. I'm Richard Kingston, I'm a consultant nephrologist and I've been looking after Claire for 10 years, something like that. She was quite anxious, didn't get out of the house very much because she was always frightened of having hypoglycemic episodes. 
And I think the biggest thing that struck me was it wasn't just impacting her, it was her children as well. I have to say, absolutely extraordinary the change in Claire very quickly afterwards. And in fact, she came along to the clinic and said, oh, we've been up at the um, Kent County show and Powell had detected somebody else having a problem. And then the fact actually that she'd been able to go to the county show uh, without getting so anxious was, was amazing. Powell has always been very textbook with his alerting. He will start by licking at my hands and it would be a hard lick on my hands, not a just sort of, oh, I love you type lick. It would be a, come on, I need you to take notice of me type lick. Um, because he'd been able to pick up on an odour of my blood sugar dropping or rising. Um, and then he would go off and fetch my blood glucose monitor um, because I've got them dotted around the house and bring it back to me. And then I would be in the process of testing it and he'd go off and trot off and fetch the glucose or my insulin for me. If he thought I wasn't paying enough attention to him, he would go and fetch someone else in the house. Um, if we happened to be on our own and he thought, you know what, she's not responding, I think her blood sugars have got too low, um, then if my neighbours would hear him barking, then they would know that something was wrong. Pal's not a barker, so for them to hear him having a good old woof would be enough of an indication for them to, to come round. Um, and if all else failed, and nobody appeared within sort of 10 minutes or so. We've got a panic button on the wall that Powell could push that goes straight through to the emergency services. I could go to school knowing that, it, that there was someone here. It may not, may not have been a human, but there was someone here to give mum that extra reassurance and, and me that she can catch her blood sugars in time before she had a hypo. She could catch it before she'd be on the floor. It, and, it, and it would cut down the amount of ambulance calls we've had, like a considerable amount. Like we'd go home and Powell would be here, Mum would say, Mum, how's your blood sugar's been today? I'd have been high, low, sort of whatever, whatever they'd been during the day. But we've had an ambulance today, have you felt this, you felt that? Nope, and she says, I felt fine. Like Powell's caught this. And it's amazing to realise that a dog can do that and, it, and how much it can change our life as a family not just mums in saving her life. It sort of saved mum's life, but turned our lives around. The power to be chosen to receive um, the PDA say Order of Merit is, yeah, it just, it's very hard to believe, but extremely, extremely proud. Hey, yes, we are very proud, aren't we? <laughs>